What drives Susie, you know, it's really, a, it's a passion to make a difference. You know, she wants people's lives to be better. She'll do what she has to in science to make that happen. I bring myself, my whole self, to my science. We live in this amazing country, but we have really high rates of infectious diseases that we shouldn't have. The research that I do, you know, involves diseases that affect vulnerable children. She's got this very strong sense of sort of social justice. She sees a problem, she sees people suffering, and all she can think is, what can I do to help? It's not done with any sense of reward or in any kind of self-promoting way. It's just a, hmm, this is not right. I could probably do something about this. So therefore, I'm, I ought to do something about this. This year, I wrote a book called Antibiotic Resistance, The End of Modern Medicine. Um, and it's about the fact that bacteria are essentially evolving to become resistant to the drugs that we use to kill them. And this has massive implications, not just for our ability to treat people with infectious diseases, but to prevent infectious diseases in vulnerable patients. And it's really important that, you know, that we give back the knowledge that, we, that we've uncovered. I see the communication as just the next step in the process of science. It's become more than academic interest now. It's become actually a life-saving interest. She really cares about getting an accurate message about how the world works and about whatever issue she's tackling out to people. She's really innovative. Her science communication is not just being on the TV. She uses her glow-in-the-dark bacteria to entertain people, but also to inform them. Um, and that's, you know, that's been really popular. It's about making science more accessible. All of this research, all of the important discoveries, and making it so that every person can read it and every person can understand it, that's the most valuable thing that I think that she's done. Susie's biggest point of difference from the science community, well, her, you know, first of all, her pink hair. How many pink-haired scientists do we have in New Zealand? But actually, that kind of says a lot about her. She's outgoing, she's extroverted, and she's approachable. It's really important to break the stereotypes of what scientists look like, because that really influences who we think should be doing this job. We all play a role in society. It needs all of us. I would hope that people see, you know, scientists as potential role models as well as much as they would see an all black, I guess. I don't think we celebrate our scientists enough. She's a pretty fierce feminist and advocate for women in science. Meeting her did actually change what I wanted to do because it was the first time I met someone who I could see that could be me. The thing that I would really like to see happen more is a conversation about who we want to be as a country, you know, where we want to be. Because a lot of the things that, you know, I study, a lot of these infectious diseases, they're either related to how we, uh, how we treat the land or they're related to how we treat people. Um, and, and fundamentally, those are the things we need to have a conversation about and we need to change.